Alright guys, what's going on? Well, I got another recommendation for another video. This is talking about a dual boot on your computer with Windows and Ubuntu. Ubuntu is Linux and uh, basically I'm just going to show you really quick what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you boot up your computer, it goes through BIOS and everything, obviously. And uh, this is talking about an Ubuntu dual boot. The Ubuntu dual boot is uh, simply this. You just uh, partition your drive into two partitions or you can install it aside Windows, which it'll make a virtual, um, bleh, fuck, virtual partition, and uh, virtually run Ubuntu. But it will still come up as a separate operating system. So when you boot your computer, it's going to come up to a two screen. So what you're going to do is uh, this is just the little thing I was reading up on, but I'm going to show you where to go. So um, yeah, give me one second just to make sure I'm not having any technical difficulties here so let me just double check okay we're good so uh, what you're gonna do is go to do, 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 ubuntu.com so you're just gonna be like u b u n t u dot com I'll have the link in the description below and this should come up if my internet could be any slower so you're gonna see, uh, hey, good looking, blah blah blah. It's fucking retarded. Um, Ubuntu 11.10 is here, so you're gonna click get Ubuntu. So you can do the download and install, try it from CD or USB, or run it with Windows. So if you click download and install, you're gonna download an ISO, and you're gonna have to burn it to a CD. If you click, um or you can download it directly to a CD or um, download it directly to a USB stick to install it that way and the run it with Windows is the virtual one that I was talking about which is the one that runs inside Windows on a virtual partition so you can do that for the easy way out or you can just go to download and install um, which is basically what I'm going to do here and I'm just going to show you really quick that I already have this and let's see documents operating systems I believe it's in here, here it is right here alright so the file if you download it and you want to burn it to a CD the ISO um, is right here it's called Ubuntu 11.10 desktop AMD 64 now 64 there's 32 bit and 64 bit it usually um, usually it automatically detects what you want so like if you're on a 64-bit operating system it's gonna detect that it's 64 and have you download the 64-bit if you're on a 32-bit operating system same principle it'll just detect 32-bit so in my case it's 64 so if you go here and you just click download and install <clears throat> it's gonna come up to this screen oh yeah you do have to select it hm, they changed it so you can select your version you can select 64 bit or 32 bit 64 bit is just basically more RAM capability so it doesn't really matter which one you install I'm just saying if you have like four gigs of RAM get the 64 bit if you got two gigs of RAM or um, lower then use 32-bit so that's that and then you just select your version and hit start download and then once the download is completed you're gonna get this file right here so once you get that file what you're gonna do is if you're running Windows Vista or 7 you can just right click on it and say open with the Windows disk image burner and then you can just select burn to a disk if you're running XP you're gonna have to burn it with some kind of third-party program like Nero or um, I don't remember if Windows Media Player or not does burn ISOs in uh, Windows XP. I don't remember, but you're going to have to find some other program in order to burn ISOs. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. I believe Format Factory burns ISOs to a disk as a disk image. So, worst comes to worst, just download that and try it out. And even if it doesn't, I think you'll find it useful. <clears throat> so... What I'm going to do now is we're going to go onward to exploring the installation of Ubuntu from the CD that I have already created. So you're going to 
burn this to a disk and make it a disk image. Remember Windows Vista or 7, just right click and say open with the Windows Disk Image Burner. And if you're running XP, you're going to need to use Nero or some other kind of third party program in order to burn the ISO to the disk. So once you burn your disk image, uh, this is what you're going to do next. So let's move on. Okay, so looking at the screen here, I have my OS running up. So I'm just going to simply uh, go here and uh, you're going to grab the disk that you have made, which uh, hold on, let me go get the disk real quick. Okay, so you should have made a disk, and uh, this is the disk right here, the Ubuntu 11.10, my 64-bit um, DVR, burned, um, burned the ISO image to this disk, and I'm just going to pop this in the disk tray real quick. So, let me just open this up, pop the CD out in there. Now also be sure to be plugged into a power supply while you do this. Um, so first things first, you're going to want to, if you're installing this, uh, you can create a partition through the installer or you can do it, uh, you can do it one of two ways. So I'm going to go to computer here and this applies also to Windows XP, it's just going to look different. Just go to uh, the icon that says my computer in your start menu or if it's on your desktop and just right click on it and hit manage. What manage is going to do is it's going to come up with this little manager here where you can <coughs> uh, pull up all your uh, your drivers and your disk management and all these other options and shit. So I'm going to go to disk management here and I'm going to make a partition for Ubuntu. Now um, Ubuntu is installed on a GUID partition table and uh, right now I have um, this is my disk right here, this is my primary disk. This is where I am right now, the C drive which is my Windows and this right here is uh, believe it or not the one that I'm running my Ubuntu off of and uh, then I got a backup partition for both so um, in order to create a partition say that this was these two right here combined I would just simply right click on that and you're gonna select shrink volume and when you shrink the volume you can determine a space for you're gonna determine the space how big you want your main partition to be in this case I wanted mine to be 170 gigabytes so I rounded it to 171 and I shrunk it down to that size and that's what I got and this is what was left over so I reformatted this so right click on it and you're just gonna uh, format will be available format it to NT, uh, NTIS and um, or NTFS my, my serious apologies format it to NTFS and then you're done so what you're simply just gonna do is start and uh, we're gonna go here and we're gonna click restart and restart your system. Now when you restart your system you're gonna restart and you're gonna come up to your BIOS. It's either gonna be F2, F12 or escape to get into your boot manager. For an example on Toshiba's it's F12, Dell it's F12 and uh, Compact is F9. Um, but that's pretty much it. So very rarely it'll be F9 but Compact is F9, Dell and Toshiba is F12, I believe HP is F12 12 or F9, one of those, so, uh, and you gotta be quick too, so, that's the bad part, especially if you have fast boot up, so, like, once your screen goes black, I recommend just tapping the F12 button or F9 button, hit F12 to go to the boot manager, and you're gonna select from CD, now, you can install Ubuntu this way, if you have a computer, and you do not have a CD drive in your computer, simply what you're going to do is just get, if you want, you can go out and buy a USB CD device, uh, CD or DVD reader, and plug it in USB, and in that case, you will select USB device. But other than that, right now, I'm just going to select my CD and DVD. So it'll boot from the disk. And you will see it batch, and here is the installer for Ubuntu that you have downloaded. Now I already have Ubuntu installed on my computer, so I'm not going to go through the whole installation process, but I'm going to go through what you need to do. So this is going to come up, it's automatically going to adjust to your um, pixelation settings on your monitor, whether you have a laptop or a desktop, it doesn't really matter. And uh, you're just going to wait for this to boot up. And you might see a few messages come up like this, just ignore them. They're just simply testing and running and seeing if it's enabled and all this fun shit. 
So you may see messages, and then it's going to go through this little check. And uh, you just got to simply wait till all of these say OK. And it'll be highlighted in orange here when it is set. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, that went fast. Didn't even have time to fucking say it was okay. Okay, so your install is gonna come up and now uh, your drivers will be loaded over from Windows, seeing that they're on the same disk drive, the drivers will be found automatically, so your everything will work, your wireless driver will work, and all this fun shit. So you're going to boot up to like a virtual OS and this virtual OS is very much like Macintosh. When you install Macintosh for the first time you notice that if like for example when you pop a Snow Leopard disc in you boot up Snow Leopard literally uh, but it's a virtual operating system and uh, it is used to install the permanent operating system. So <clears throat> allowing this to load it's going to come up with the installation methods. Now you're going to select English and you're gonna hit install Ubuntu so you hit install Ubuntu and uh, you wanna make sure that it's connected to the internet so we're gonna come up here and I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi really quick and let's see did I write that correctly yes I did connect now it'll connect to your wireless network and allow it to connect you know, it might take some time connection established Download updates while installing. You can do this or you can install updates later. I advise do it later. It will make the installation go by much quicker. And do not install third party software. So you're going to hit continue. And then you're going to come to uh, the uh, Wi-Fi network connection. And you're going to select the Pathlo network. And then you're going to hit continue. Or you're going to select your connection anyway and then just hit continue. Alright, so you're gonna come to this screen right here and uh, basically this screen is just all your partitions and everything so uh, yeah, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna select a partition for Ubuntu to install on. Now again, this is the screen that's gonna come up. The last screen, just forget about that one. Um, which I probably will just cut it out in the video to go with the installation anyway. So make sure that this comes up. So once that comes up, select the partition and then continue to install Ubuntu. Well, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to quit this installer because then you just run the installation through. So I'm just going to quit this installer and boot up and show you what it's going to look like when you boot up Ubuntu real quick. Okay, so once you install Ubuntu and you're going to boot up and you're probably going to see this custom boot menu come up. This is the GNU Grub version 1.99 for Ubuntu. You can load your windows, you can do memory tests, memory tests for 86 serial consoles, uh, the Linux generic recovery mode, and the Ubuntu. So I'm just going to boot up Ubuntu. That's my uh, fiance, in case you're wondering. And yeah, so this is what Ubuntu is. So uh, all this fun stuff. And uh, when you go to do your updates, this is the... Uh, where is it? It'll, it'll come up on the side here. It'll say updates or whatever. Uh, Ubuntu 1, I think it'll sh show the updates of what you need. So, yeah, that's that. And uh, just like anything else, I can access my uh, hard disk and everything, and all those fun shits. I can access my book from here. And there you have it, we're back on Windows. So, this is. Uh, successful installation of Ubuntu alongside Windows with a dual boot option. So thank you for the recommendation for that video and we will continue forward. Okay so that was how to install Ubuntu alongside Windows with a dual boot option. So again I will have the information below on how to do this correctly. Uh, selecting the partition is basically the only pain in the ass part about it if you're not too familiar with it. IT's and people like those that have been in the environment for a while will understand what I'm talking about, how you have to format the partition to a GUID partition table into NTFS and install Ubuntu on that with a separate, you know, shrinking buttons and things like that. But I'll have it all written below um, for you so you can learn how to do this yourself. 
So again, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you. I hope you enjoy Ubuntu. Also, Ubuntu will be able to be updated from inside the operating system. So you'll be able to update it like that right from Ubuntu unless you install it with the executable file which you use through Windows. Uh, then you'll have to download it through Windows and update it that way. But other than that, you can update straight from Ubuntu. So, um, yeah, so rate, comment, subscribe, which is probably right up here. And also in the beginning of the video, if you see my little speech thing, it'll say, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. But if you click on that, you'll subscribe to me. So, uh, yeah, so enjoy. And uh, link will be below, Ubuntu.com. Just go down there to download the latest version. Burn the ISO. You're all set to go. And then to follow this tutorial, it will be good.